At this time, we are going to have a trumpet solo by my good friend, Brother F.F. F. Bosworth. Brother Bosworth. <laughs> appreciated that. Now I wonder while you're kind of tuning up there, we could have a little chorus of Down at the Cross. It's kind of a favor to me. I wonder if you would play it. All right, Brother Bosworth. Up here in this little visit here with Brother and Sister Manfanelli tonight. I wonder whether, Hooper, if you got a word, you'd just like to say something in the microphone now. So I do appreciate this wonderful time we're having together here. Brother Bob, Brother Branham, and Brother Sharon, and others of us here, this Brother McAnally, we're having a time with our lives. Thank the Lord. Yes, sir. Brother McAnally's next to the best hog hunter in the country. He's the best when I'm gone. All right, I want to have a word from the wife here. All right, honey, what's she going to say? I'm certainly glad for the privilege I have of being in Arizona and glad for the privilege I have to meet friends like Brother and Sister McNally. Brother Bosworth, what do you think about Arizona and these people here? I'm just having the most wonderful time. A guy, you could say, I came clear from Miami out here in one day, flew all the way in one day to be with Brother Brennan. And I've just been tickled pink over <laughs> the privilege. <laughs> we went out hog hunting the other day. We found a lot of tracks, but we didn't find any hogs. <laughs> we saw plenty of rabbits, but we couldn't find anything that we was looking for. We went out and looked in the same rocks we did a year ago, but there was less tracks than there was a year ago. <laughs> How about Brother Broadway saying another little piece? Well, I'm going to do everything that you've done for us since we've been on your own this trip, and I trust to Almighty God that. Someday we can be back together again. God bless you, brother. I've always wanted to hear your wife's voice. Sister Mike, you me, I'll be many miles away, but when you play her, think of me. I'm so happy that you all drop in to see us, and so glad that to meet Mrs. Sister Brandon. Okay, well, thank you, Sister Mike and Willie. That was very, very fine. Oh, uh, she's just a little timid woman. I kind of like that old. Brother Bosworth, you got another one on that old uh, trumpet way over here. We'd just like to hear another one from Brother Mike and them. God bless you, brother. All right, Brother Bosworth. <laughs> Fine, 
and Brother Bob here. Thank the whole lot. Brother Hippie, got another word to say? Nothing to say? Honey? Oh, my. Matt, tell us something right quick over this microphone, will you? <laughs> Brother Johnny was telling about his hunting trip up in Colorado. He said there was one place up there that was about 10,000 deer, and uh, there was lots of elk. And this year he killed him a 10 point buck, and uh, he shot a bear up there, and he shot a big elk that went over a thousand pounds. And I feel I'd like to go up there hunting going down. Fine. You want a word to say, Brother Bob? Just say something else. <laughs> Uh, I've been having a glorious time being down here with uh, a brother Danny. Strange to say, I've been so busy that I never knew of him, except to heard him directly just short time ago. And uh, we have been working many years going for the church. They do revivals for uh, something like 35, 30 years. And uh, in many times here, but we did that without having the gift of healing our brother Danny had. We just used the word, and we knew that the word is the seed. God's word is called the seed. And just like material seed, every seed will do its own work, always. Every time in a million, if you treat it right. And so just like the father sows his seed, that is oats and his corn, and so on, and gets certain results by having, by having the seed in the ground. So the imperishable seed, God's word, will always do exactly what the father says. Every time in a million. One thing you can be absolutely sure about. Before anything happens. Yes. That's one reason I've enjoyed about holding it out. I know what's going to happen. I want things in God's way. And there's no such thing as a divine promise ever going on till, on so far, if we you know what our part is. In the New Testament, we should make it possible. God is not locked over his word to perform it. As one thing that can always try hard will never disappoint them. Mm -hmm. People miss some things that they want because of the fact they haven't been taught enough to get it just how, but it's never because God's unwilling. It's just their lack of knowing how, but I have found in thousands of cases by simple instruction that people can be brought to the state of faith before things happen.